most of these things are genetic. And so you can't get what you never had. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Cherie again with another video. If you want to know the different elements of a hair profile and how to figure out yours, stay tuned. Hopefully this one will be extremely informative, easy to understand, and will help you along with your natural hair journey. I hope you have your pen, your notebook, your tea, coffee, whatever it is that you drink, pick your poison, and sit down and let's get into your hair profile and what that consists of. So the other day I posted on my Instagram just a brief, um, brief post. It was just basically like, what is your hair profile or do you know your hair profile? And if you don't follow me on Instagram, please make sure you head on over there to my IG. It is at Natural Beginnings and I give daily tips, tricks, Sometimes it's just thought-provoking questions. Sometimes I take a poll just to see where people are at, at least see, you know, what the consensus is. So go ahead and um, follow me there. And also make sure if you're watching this video and you're not subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe and click like while you're at it. Make sure you share and tell a friend. All right, so enough of that. Let's get into the reason why we are here today. So, um, in the natural hair community, hair typing um, or curl pattern typing is very common. You know, you go natural, you see your curls start to show out after you cut off the relaxer and you're like, okay, um, you're a 3C, A, B, 4, A, B, C, and that's just what it is. When in actuality, there is so much more to that. I mean, it might be easier if it was that simple, but it's not. And so what I'm going to do is break down each of the things that you need to be concerned with. So, um, and I have some notes with me, so don't mind if I look back and forth, I'm just going to make sure I stay on track for this video. And I want to get into things that are important about your hair that go beyond the curl patterns and pattern typing. So we'll, we will address that briefly in this video and maybe further in depth in the future videos. For me, it's not a huge deal. It, it only has one like major factor as far as I'm concerned because nat natural hair can be manipulated to look like anything. And that's the beauty of our hair, the beauty of having curly hair, uh, especially type four hair. You can get it as kinky coily as you like and get it to hold in that shape and you can get it bone straight if you want. We are going to start by addressing the different properties that make up your hair profile. Um, so beyond hair typing, we also have porosity. Um, porosity is probably one of the most important elements um, or properties to know about your hair. And so basically what hair porosity consists of is the ability for your hair to absorb moisture and also to retain that moisture. And so when you look at the hair strand, and I'm gonna insert charts here back and forth just to help you um, visualize what I'm talking about. But when you take a strand of hair there are several layers that it's made up of. Um, there is the cuticle, the cortex, and the medulla. The medulla is the center layer. The cortex is outside of that, and the cuticle is on the outside of that strand. The cuticle is going to be several layers, depending on how thick or wide your hair strand is. We're going to get into that as well. Here's another one. Imagine so, the shingles on a roof and they sit on top of each other like this. Well, you have the same situation going on on your hair strands. And so when you have low porosity hair, the your hair cuticle sits very close like this. And it doesn't like to move um, unless you do a couple of different things. One of those things. That 
hair strand is closed like this for the majority of the time, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it depends on how you're treating your hair. Um, you also have medium porosity, which is actually like the ideal hair porosity type to have. That means your hair is accepting moisture and releasing moisture or holding in that moisture at normal rates that keeps your hair moisturized. You don't have to do a lot of um, conditioning and moisturizing and sealing with the oil in order to maintain moisture. Um, and the other end of the spectrum is high porosity hair. And so high porosity hair um, can be from, can stem from several things. It can be genetic, which each of these are mainly based on genetics, but it can also be from manipulation and damage to your hair strands. So with high porosity hair, you think of um, a sponge where there's lots of holes and spaces and it's easy for water to go in and to leave out of the sponge. This is the same thing with high porosity hair. There's several gaps and spaces in the cuticle which don't allow it to, it, it allows it to um, take in lots of moisture, which is, which can be good and it can be bad depending on how well it's holding or releasing that moisture. And so it doesn't always close tightly enough to where it can keep the moisture in. So as soon as it's receiving the moisture, it's leaving. So you want to be somewhere in the middle and nobody, everybody isn't born with a perfect porosity level. You're either on this side with low porosity and typically um, curly, coily, kinky hair is on that lower end of the spectrum. And then you're either on high porosity, which um, can also be caused from damage, from chemical processing, from straightening, from using too much heat, or just too much manipulation. You can damage your cuticle and um, the hair shaft can become very porous. So, um, that's a lot of information. We are going to break that down into a series. I'm going to go and talk about low, medium, and high more in depth later on. It's just too much to do in this one video. Um, there um, are reasons why knowing your porosity level is important. And that is because it can determine what type of products you need to use for your hair to actually maintain moisture, to maintain a style, and to just have healthy hair. So, so when you ask a question like, well, what product is best for my hair? Honestly, my first answer is, well, it's the product that's gonna work for your hair type. And it doesn't answer your question, but that's just because I either have to personally be able to, you know, consult with you, see your hair strand, and do a few things to experiment and see what works. Um, or you have to have that knowledge of, okay, well, my hair profile is this. Now, when it comes to porosity, there is a way to test and kind of gauge and see what level of porosity you're at. Um, I'll go more into that in my understanding your profile hair porosity next, video. The next but thing we're going to get into is strands and the width of your strands. That's another major factor in understanding your hair profile. There are three different types of strand, um, basically thickness. And there's a little confusion sometimes with your strand thickness and the actual thickness of your hair. That's something else. That's density. And we're going to go to that next. But the thickness of a single strand of your hair will determine if you have fine, medium, or coarse hair. But for a good amount of naturals in the type 4 category, you have coarse strands of hair. Um, and that just means that your hair cuticle has more layers, its thickness is thicker than someone else's hair cuticle. And the way to determine that is pretty simple. You can either take a strand of your hair um, and you can hold it up to the light. Just one single strand and if you can barely see that, you have very fine hair. Another way to determine that is to hold the hair in between your fingers. I 
don't know what you guys can see here. But if you can see me holding up this strand of hair, it's not easy for everyone. My hair is extremely coarse. You know it's genetic. My mom has very thick and coarse hair as well. Um, and so if you can hold a single strand of hair into your head, if you can hold a single strand of hair from your head and actually feel it in between your fingers, it's probably going to be more on the medium to coarse side. If you now, why strand width is important is because this will also affect the type of products you can use on your hair. If your hair is very fine, um, it's very lightweight, and you're trying to apply products that are super heavy, like butters and creams and heavy oils like castor oil, it can weigh down your strands and it's not going to give you the results that you're looking for when you're styling. And so that's what you have to understand and you have to make um, preparation for when you're going to buy products and when you're going to sell your hair. So and next, let's move on to density. So we've touched on porosity, uh, strand thickness or width, and now we're going to go on to density. Now, density is basically the volume of the strands of hair on your head overall. Um, one way to determine density um, is by counting hair. Now, I don't know who's going to sit up here and count <laughs> all the hairs in your head. It is said that on average, a single square inch, so if you took a square, I don't know if that's about like a square inch, like a single square inch section of your hair can have 2200 strands in one single square inch. So um, there's a way that you could count that. You could get a, you could estimate or um, extrapolate from there, but who's, who's gonna do that, guys? <laughs> so that's a lot. So um, there's a pretty basic and easy tip to follow when you are trying to figure out what kind of density you have. And some people, this is just very obvious. So this is how you want to examine that. You take your hair in a dry state, non-parted, so pretend I don't have this part here, and you check it from the top, from the sides, the back, you move your hair around, and if you can see, or if you can't see any scalp, so pretend I didn't part here, if you can't see any of my scalp, then that is a sign of high density hair. That means that your hair is thick. So when people say you have thick hair, usually that's what they're talking about. Not thick strands, but thick hair. That means you have high density hair. If you, you know, do the same test, visual test that I just did, and your hair is a little different, maybe you can see a little bit more um, in the crown area of your scalp and maybe not the back, which is the case with her then maybe you have low to medium density hair. Now, I will say this because people ask questions about how can you make your hair grow or how can you make it thicker? So with density, just like porosity and just like your strand width, most of these things are genetic. And so you can't get what you never had. Now, being that said, there are different ways that you can create the illusion of fuller hair, of thicker hair. When you have um, low density hair, you can style it in ways that are complementary and make it appear fuller and thicker. Um, now, if it's, a, if it's a condition where you had thick, full strands of hair before or thicker density hair, and you've lost some, as long as there is no permanent damage to your cuticle, that can be returned. So those strands can regenerate hair. And sometimes you need just a little stimulation um, to your scalp and things like scalp massage and oils like rosemary, peppermint, they can um, offer that stimulation and help regrow hair. I actually posted something about flowers assisting in the growth of your hair and um, hibiscus 
flour, if you make it into a tea and use it as a rinse, can help with stimulating and regrowing um, hair from follicles that maybe um, are just in a, a not a, a dead phase, but um, a period where they have just kind of temporarily stopped growing. Um, so that can be done. But if you didn't have high density hair when you were born, if that wasn't wired into your DNA, then that's not going to be something that you can repair. But there are ways to work around that. And when I get into um, my video series, when I get further into this video series and talk about hair density, we'll go over some things to help as far as styling and um, possibly regenerating hair from follicles that have kind of been asleep for a while. So we did porosity, we did density, we did strand thickness, and the only thing that's really left here is hair type. The hair typing system is grouped into numbers. There's one which is straight, two which is curly, I'm sorry, two which is wavy, three which is curly, and then, and then you have type four, which is the curlier, kinkier, um, and sometimes it's not even a curl, sometimes it's an S shape. I know personally a lot of my curls are an S shape and not necessarily a quail. Depends on which section of hair of my head that I'm in. Um, if you want to get into hair length and retention, that is where this really plays an important role. Understanding that when you have very tightly coiled kinky hair strands um, or hair pattern, that that state is not always advantageous if you are trying to retain length. So for uh, the majority of the time you guys see me in a hairstyle where my hair has been in a stretched state. And so I don't often do wash and goes, not just because, you know, I get super shrunken curls, which is not. The other thing about type four hair is that it is extremely durable, it's extremely resilient. However, if it's not pro properly moisturized and maintained, it can look very dry and very dull. And so that's one thing that we have to take into consideration. When you have type four hair, you know, type three at the end of the scales, it's actually pretty coily too. Um, you need to take extra care into how much moisture you put into your hair. And this goes back to porosity. And this is why porosity is so important to understand. And with the, these things being said, I've addressed each type of hair property that you want to be concerned with when you're looking into what's the best way to properly maintain, buy products, and style your hair. And that's really what I wanted to accomplish today. The next video in this series, the next video in this series, we are going to get into depth about hair porosity. I'll go into the different tests that you can take to see what your hair porosity level is um, and also the best product types for each porosity level in this range. And if you guys want to see more of these types of videos, please let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something from it, please go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and make sure to tell a friend or someone you know who may find this helpful as well. And that's all I have for you guys today. I really enjoyed sitting down and breaking into the science of natural hair. But I'm not, this is something that's a passion of mine and that really fascinates me. So it's, it's a pleasure to sit here and go into these things. All right, that's all I have for now. Stay tuned for the next part in the series where we are going to get more into porosity. That's Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Now you guys know I couldn't end this video without mentioning this hairstyle and how gorgeous the curls are looking. If you're curious to know how I got this style, 
please stay tuned for a future video and I'll be breaking down all the details how I got these luscious, beautiful, bouncy curls. As always, I'll see you in the next video and thank you so much for watching.